Hello everybody and welcome to Let's Build Live from Oak Hill Works. How are we all doing? I hope you are okay. It is good to have you all here and for the first time in a very long time we are starting a new project that is something we have not done before because I'm pretty sure we have never dealt with an etched brass kit. Which is actually why I chose this one to be our project for this weekend. Because I wanted something different. And good evening Digger, welcome. How are you this evening? I hope you are well. And as you can see here in the background we have a very nice looking Craven train. Approve of Oak Hill Works and new projects. Why thank you James, I'm glad you approve. And also etch brass kits, excellent. I am very glad of that because I'm going to build one. But yes, for those that haven't seen, it has been shown in a few places, our little Craven tank has some lining now. After its tumble last week, it's had, it took a visit to the works the other night and it is looking very much better for it. Lining, for now a printed number plate, it will be getting an etched brass one at some point. New supports for the cab roof. I, I removed the old ones completely, made up complete new ones and they are a lot sturdier and a lot stronger. So yes, I am very happy with how this loco has gone. I've also done some more work on the carriages through the week, so the brake now has, as you see, it's got all its glazing in. It's got one less hand uh, door handle now because that one just came off. Never mind, it's only a bit of bent brass. It's got the LBSC gas, the early oval garter on it. So glazing is all the way around that is both sides are done. And the other brake we were working on also now has its glazing in, including an open window on this side. And some weights to stop it rolling off the workbench because it's very free rolling that one. And earlier today I was asked to write up an article about this train in its entirety. So I'm going to get the other side of this one done, get that finished. And it will be appearing in the Christmas edition of the Brighton Circles Modellers Digest. Oh, I love getting articles in there. Always feels good. You are good, that is good to hear, Digger. Insane on the Craven train. <laughs> Thank you, James. Lining and non destroyed. Excellent. That was what's been to the 1860s. Thank you, James. Very nice. Thank you, Andy. So, yes, I am very happy with how that went. But now, as they used to say on a very funny TV show, it's time for something completely different. A different railway, a slightly different era the 1910s and a different form of manufacture being etched brass and white metal and plastic and all those other bits but mainly etched brass which as I say I don't believe we have dealt with before as a medium on the stream which is why I wanted to do it. Ah, they're in there, that's why. I was just looking at this thinking I can only see four W irons and it's a six wheel brake fan. And that would be very awkward. 
So this is the old DNS kit. I have all the instructions for it here, as you can see. They will be going on the pin board where my instructions usually go. Just move my pen pot out of the way because it's sitting on the drawing pins. I have heard when pinning something to your pin board, having pins is recommended. get one through the centre here where these overlap and drop everything of course good job I haven't actually stuck the bodies on yet isn't it Okay, what, what we're learning here is I need to stop storing my USB sticks on top of the pin board. No, that's not a command, apparently. I'm sure I thought I added that one. I remember liking that one. Spot's definitely running. Unless it isn't. No, the bot's definitely running, I can see it. So yes. Yep, see there we go. It's definitely running. So yes, we are working on the as I say, the DNS six wheel South Eastern and Chat and Break Van which will go you know, very nicely with some of my South Eastern and Chatham locos, such as my C-Class, which of course was a good loco, so it needs a break there. So interestingly, this instruction says running period 1910 to 1950. And then the next line says, these vans were built by the South Eastern Railway in 1898. Must have left them sitting for a very long time. Were virt virtually identical with the 20 ton six wheel brake vans being built by the Midland at that time. How the design came to be used remains a mystery as certain dates and career moves do not quite tie up. Originally 40 were built in the period up to 1909 to be followed by another 50 incorporating double veranda design built between 1910 and 1914. The original 40 being altered to conform to the later design in most respects. Ah, that's what it is. It's the original build only had the, were the single veranda ones. I used to have a second one of these kits which I considered um, converting into the single veranda one. But I sold it instead. Either that modified between building and these, then these must be double verandas. They are indeed, this is a double veranda. It actually shows on the instructions where to, you can modify to remove the veranda. Because, you know, it's hard to tell where the veranda is. So it's then got build dates and running numbers for all of them. I prefer single veranda versions of both these and the MR ones. The single veranda ones are very nice, aren't they? I do intend on having both the single veranda and double veranda eventually. I will probably do the single veranda as a bash from the Midland kits. As someone did on RM Web, it, it escapes me who right now. But there is an article in the pre grouping section about converting the Midland kit into single veranda, one of these. 
Well, I'll have to go try and get back to stand by for now. Okay, thank you for popping by, even if it was Brief Digger. Great to have you here. Hopefully, we'll sh we shall see you again later. If not, hopefully next week. So. Let's read the rest. There's a bit more of the background after the numbers, actually. Those for local traffic had locks on the doors and security barred windows. The last survivor, 55380, transferred to the engineer's department in 1950 to be based with others at Redbridge Sleeper Depot until the early 60s. Prototype information came from Mike King. And the drawings are apparently in volume 3 of Southern Wagons, which was, as this was being printed, steadily approaching release. I have that article bookmarked, can't remember who it was. Yeah, so it, it's a good one, and it's a really well done conversion. If that's how we end up making one on, if we end up making one on stream using that method, we will definitely have their name written down so that we can credit them. So we have reached the part where it wants me to start the build, and I'm sure you do too, since we are already ten minutes in, and it wants me to start by detaching the ends. Which it labels as number three and number seven. It doesn't actually have a. It just. It gives me all the numbers of the parts on the instructions. But there's no actual map of them all, and I've just got to find the numbers on here for them. Ever so helpful. No, they're not going to go in. That's a shame. I really do need to get a thinner pair of those that go in. These blades will cut brass. Possibly not when it's laying on the glass though. No, it needs to go on the wood to do that. No problem whatsoever. And there we have the bot reminding everyone to smash that like button or give it a gentle tap if you prefer. And whilst you're there, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell so you get alerted when I go live or upload a video. And who knows when that will be at the moment. I've actually got something really simple planned for this Tuesday so I don't have lots of editing that I don't have time to do. So there's our our ends carefully remove the door posts which are these four bits in the middle here clean off tabs separate out the sides carefully removing the door inlays okay so as I was saying with the, with the knife and these bits of brass it really does place it next to it and bring it down And a bit of a guillotine in action removes it cuts through the brass really quite easily the problem is doing that on the glass because it's too solid
will separate those out. And since it's asked us to clean off the tab, we'll clean off the tabs now. using the file to make sure we get rid of the extra material. Does YouTube have a metric for when in a stream that people press like? Um, I think it does. I've never looked at it, but I believe it does. Forgot about the ones on the side. Oh, and there's ones on the inside of the door as well, isn't there? Interesting, what this fed um. YouTube has the ability to check many, many, many things so that you can improve viewer interaction on videos and streams and such forth. The interaction itself improves how YouTube will present me and where it will recommend my, my videos which of course is a big way of traffic coming in is being recommended it by YouTube elsewhere. Don't feel like I've seen a YouTube stream that shows alerts about likes. No, th there's nothing I could put through the alert for it, but in, but in the back end, I believe I can look and see when it was, pre w at what point it was pressed. I certainly can't put it on an alert and I could see that getting a bit annoying if it was. Because of course you can like and unlike and like and unlike as many times as you want. So if it was done as an alert, it would be a great way to come in as a troll what like what whilst you can hide people from the chat you can't stop them from viewing so there'd be no way to block someone from abusing that Yes, very spammable. And we've had our night of the trolls, we don't need any more. Especially not with new ways they could abuse it. Still, who wants to be impressed that Streamlabs working? Round of applause for Streamlabs, everyone, for doing the thing it's designed to do. Good evening, Will. Welcome. What, are you, what about all our Americans we have in the chat? 
Are you going to say hello to them as well? Tonight we are building an etched brass breakdown. Well, you know, starting. I don't expect to get anywhere near built. I never do, and sometimes I get surprisingly far, don't I? <laughs> One cheer for Streamlabs. Yeah, that, that, that's all the cheers Streamlabs deserves right now. I can't say it's in my good book still after last week. Rather a large bit there, I'm gonna chop most of that off with the knife if I can get this the right way around so I can see it properly. There we go. I, I'm a strange person, I want to carry wheel. It's a very good point. You're all strange, but I don't mind as long as you're somewhere near the YouTubes. All the best people are mad. Indeed they are, James. Some of the worst ones are as well. There's a big bit on that one as well. Which one can conclude all of the people are mad? I mean, yeah, I'm pretty sure they are, James, if I'm being completely honest. Excuse me, I'm not strange or mad, I'm criminally insane, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Alex, I'll we'll, we'll, we'll make sure to get that right in future. You are criminally insane. In the mad world, only the mad are sane. Indeed, James. No, but were you raided, Gary? You... Oh, I have not been raided, no. Only people who are truly crazy don't worry that they might be crazy. Think I'm American, I've said. <laughs> Fair enough, Andy. <laughs> Right, so yes, it wants the um, sides removed now. Carefully removing the door inlay, form the top flange, bend and check the angle of this against the end form. Okay, I see. So we will be removing the sides from the etch. And removing the door with that apparently madness why that isn't part of the etch i why that's a part of the etch that needs removing i don't know and then folding over the top i'm not convinced i am going to remove the doors because i don't plan on modeling them open I'm not mad, it's all the others in my head that are mad. <laughs> good, good answer. Do send the people in my room. And good evening, Christopher. How are you this evening? I hope you are well. Really point you back at this, shouldn't I? Found a bunch of VHS in a house I was helping tear down the other day, debating on watching them. Oh, why not? Why not? Give them a watch.
I can't see my right angle piece. What did I do with it? I've got a bit of brass right angle that I was going to use for the folding. Great thanks, how's yourself all here? I am very good, thanks Christopher. Be even better if the weather would give us a break, but you know, can't have everything. Video killed the radio star. Killed the radio star. Copyright come near and far. To Gary's stream when he does sing. YouTube video star. <laughs> Indeed. Crazy people and vintage naughty home videos. Y yeah, why not? Technically, DVDs killed the video star, then YouTube killed everything. Literally. No, no, no. Google killed everything. How do you know a uh, naughty home video might be recorded in the daytime television? They might indeed, James. That's more what I was thinking. Don't worry about the weather. Apparently, it's getting very cold next week. Yay, cold. No, no, not gold. Always believe in your soul. Most that unlabeled and you never know. <laughs> we go flap dancing. Where, where is the bit of brass that I wanted? I normally have something sitting on it. That's irritating. I have other tools, it's fine. It's just that's what I was planning on using. It's rather irritating that he vanished. I think Gary is singing this evening. No, not at all. Never. You'll never get me singing. Tap dancing better than lap dancing. I actually agree there, James. I do agree. Post a pic of them in the Discord. No, no, I don't know about that. Look, look, there's my Twitter account being plugged. Go to Twitter and check out my Twitter. It's all Twittery. Where the one shows me the stars crawling out the screen. Where it's nice knowing you. <laughs> oh, very good. Very good. Bye bye, coaster. That is, of course, the sign that hydration is important. Oh wait, no, no, let's not move that yet. Let's get that file out that we just put away because we want to clean up all the edges on this first. And I've forgotten to remove these bits out of here. So let's do that as well. This is because you're all distracting me with your singing. Why would you all be singing at me? Sing please the birds. <laughs> Trust me. Actually, no, you do want to hear my cover of Feed the World. Only it's not suitable for my live streams. Distractions. So I found an old Thomas Bush toy. Check the Discord L later. I will check the Discord. In about two and a half hours.
have for children, the unlabeled videos will be children's programmed, I suspect. I agree, James. We do have our half etched line along the back to fold against, to fold on. But I did have a bit of graft just over long enough. Oh, it's been on stream before, it's a U shape. And it is slightly longer than this for folding stuff like this. Pop it in and see if I can quiet for a long time. <laughs> Hold on, oh, I've got other stuff I can fold it against to make sure it stays square. It was just a case of using that, I'd get a perfect right angle. I mean, I'm not even sure I want it in a right angle, but it would get me one. Children's programs like Hartley Hair. Yep, yep. No, the Terriers were a bit underpowered and underbranked. No, they weren't. Terriers had exactly the right amount of power and exactly the right amount of braking. Will goes quiet for a long time. It's either Naughty Home Videos or the Haunted House or Haunted Video. Or he really enjoys whatever child's program comes on. That's what my bet's on. Speaking of discourse like the Thomas Tank Engine, indeed it might be James. Not gonna lie, if an old Thomas comes on I might watch it. Exactly. Just leave me running in the background, every viewer counts on the YouTube algorithm. Far farming views, no YouTube, you've got it all wrong. I would never do such a thing. Well, admittedly, last week's stream, where we, where obviously all my social media links were wrong because Streamlabs is stupid, only got half the number of views as usual. not a fan of only half the number of views so you will need to watch this one twice to make up for it where is my brass thing I can't believe I've lost that He's definitely gone though.
Yeah, and I like to click it if I go quiet, isn't due to haunted or naughty or kids' videos, it's due to terrible British infrastructure. Hurrah for terrible British infrastructure. Pipkins open it a week of sleep. Only half of us need to watch this one twice. No, you all do. I want more views. Like last week got half the views, so I want this one to get double. I like old. Oh, VHS is probably better than new VHS. Yep. Yes, yes, new VHS. There is a joy in VHS. There, there is. Unless there is some girl that comes calling out the screen at you, then there's a not so much joy. I thought that might happen. Such a small bit on these ends. Look at me using my anvil to actually do stuff with metal. Oh, I like to them by digitising them. Well, why not, Will? Why not, indeed? Last week got half views, this one gets double, this is one and a half views, 1.5 times views up. Exactly, that's the idea, James. Watch 101 Puppies last week on VHS. Why? Well, hey, some mini Wiley Coyote. It does not. It does not, I'm afraid. But I'm glad you love my mini anvil. I also love my mini anvil, it's great. Half oh, fifty-eight times you need a teeny hammer and a teeny forge. I do, don't I? That would be cool. Lots of old work, workplace VHS training videos. Why not? Tiny anvil made of brass. It is. I wouldn't say it'd be cool. It'd be extremely hot. Well, yes. You're right, it would. But yes, Andy, the tiny, the mini anvil is made of brass. Those better or worse than North videos. <laughs> so there we go, now those bits fit together. Why well, hey, look at that. It's a break fan. I know I assume that's not what it wants us to do next. But I've done it anyway. Ben didn't check the end of this against the end form. Oh, so it, it does actually want us to do that next. Not even joking. Well, I'm not going to get them all up, am I? That's a shame. Point is, they all fit in quite nicely together and quite square. Do not deform the part over the end verandas. Press out the rigid detail in the upper side and sweat in the inlays. Have we got a number for the inlays? Four. Do we have anything on here with that number? It doesn't look like we do. Oh, 
Time to check the other bits of brass. Funny, my little bus buzz off with great fans. We should watch together and we'll make fun of them. Not, not right now. Got something on at the minute. Well, it turns out to be daytime television for 2003. <laughs> We've got some handrail wire. We've got some acetate. Pardon nostalgia, as you may be younger than me, nostalgia for me would be day from 93, not 2003. Yeah, yeah 2003 is not nostalgia. Daytime TV, anyway. Do you want to laugh? Watch German Fortress training videos channel. <laughs> well, I've seen that one, yes. Got a preformed roof, still preformed after however many years it's been. Lots of white metal fittings. Some other small parts. But none of those appear to be what number four looks like, or what claims to be number four. So I'm going to look at this again. Now I actually have a picture of this. I find that for me. Good job the roof's preformed given the coffee percolator smashage. Indeed. Yes, poor coffee percolator. Everything falls apart, that certainly did. So up here on my picture. We have the end piece, we have the door inlay, which is labelled here, you probably can't read it, because I can't on my preview, which says 4. I think that is these bits here. They don't say number 4 on them, but they look right, and there's two of them, and then there is two sets here that appear to be these window bits next to them which are labelled on there as five and in fact are labelled on the brass as five so i think those are them they have the etched door marks in them as I would expect. They fit. And it would make sense that they weren't, that they've been moved and weren't on the part that I was removing stuff from earlier, where I was very confused by the fact it wanted me to remove them. Put the wheel bearings back in there and what I'm assuming is a tube to hold the centre axle. More largely because making play-doh out of teeth when you aren't there now. <laughs> yeah. Oh and the, the whatever this is. We'll put the whatever this is in there as well. I think it might be the um, chimney from the stove. Unless there's a white metal one of them. Dear me, I'd rather make people out of Play-Doh than Play-Doh out of people. Indeed, James, I quite agree with you. Let's see if this is thick enough that I can do this without moving the camera. It is. There we go. Everything has a use.
I'd still rather use modelling. I agree. Yeah, I also agree. So yeah, that 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 seems very much like that's the part to me. And as long as we end up with something that looks like a brake van, that's what matters. That's interesting. There's, um, notes on here for the differences between this and the Midland one. I know Midland vans had a second horizontal handrail 12 inch below the first one. As a note on there, is that trying to suggest that you could make the Midland ones out of this if you wanted to as well? I approve of model brake vans that look like brake vans, all the best model brake vans. Look like brake vans. Yeah, yeah. All the best model brake vans do indeed look like brake vans. Is much to be good for your firm. Ginties are all right, I suppose. I've got a couple of them. I've seen worse locos. Take the floor unit detached. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I said, uh, yeah. It wanted me to detach the floor unit and bend it and stuff before because it's got the. Um, windows in it which makes me think even more that I'm doing the right thing see I feel a price pile of home airbrush part and clean at the moment this is my rifle this is my gun this one's for shoots and this one's for fun My grandmother remembers over on the southern end of the Mid Wales line from 1930s to 50s. Wow, interesting. Proof of doing the right thing. Excellent. Bizarre because this little one is doing a great job at the moment. Graham Farish. Engage in tea, splendid. Uh, I, I prefer your other engage locos that you've been showing me, if I'm being completely honest. Right, I suppose I should turn on this soldering iron. which, as it happens, is already heated up for soldering brass because all these new supports on here are very soldered. Actually, the originals we built on stream were just the three uprights, and they look better on this side, were just the three uprights. This now has a cross member here, which there was on the drawing, and one across the top holding all three together which gives us a very secure structure that doesn't bend or anything in any way whatsoever so that is held together very nice and strong now we're gonna want these next so let's get them cut out even though I just used the um, soldering iron heating up time to talk about why the soldering iron's already turned up to the right temperature. Hello back, I'm Gary, welcome, how are you? 
through the drop proof Craven tanks. Well, I would say that one really did survive very well, James. It was pretty drop proof on its own. Hello, bash headache today. Sorry, I'm late. Well, I'm sorry to hear you have a bashing headache, Javier. I will try not to be too loud or show you too many nice, beautiful things that will make you happy. <laughs> Or mention the fact that he's getting another magazine article now that it's finished. He makes a great backdrop, this train. And it does look so wonderful. For those that haven't seen the pictures that I put everywhere of it the other day on bright helmstone do go and have a look because it looks fantastic in that setting and that layout is period appropriate because that is brighton works as it was in craven's day before the stroudley rebuild proof of craven backdrops indeed and now i want you to go see my craven images i believe there's a commandment about them Brighton works, as in Craven's day, chaotic. I mean, you've seen the pictures of terriers on it. <laughs> the pictures were posted to Discord, they were posted to Twitter, they were posted to RMWeb. And I'm hoping one of them's going to become the cover picture for the model on Javier's Shapeway shop. Oh, Craven for Craven. It's absolutely wonderful. It is indeed. Quote the Craven. Nevermore. <laughs> well, we did. We we did. I mean, no one else joined in with us doing that on Discord the other day. I was disappointed. Thought if enough people joined in, we could get the whole thing. Or I was at least hoping someone would post a Homer Simpson gif from when the Simpsons did it. It is a long poem. You're quite right. Must have been off that there. Proof of the basic to requite. Well, I think it was Red posted the first verse. I posted the second. And then it got into a discussion about other poems and stuff. Simpsons didn't do the whole poem. They did not. I am aware. But yeah, you know, I thought if we're not going to get, I thought if we don't get the whole poem, we'll at least get someone post a gif of Bar as the Raven. There are YouTube videos of people with pet ravens trained to say never more. That's amazing. That's actually amazing. Oh, I see a message on um, Discord there. I have the entirety of either the engine on VHS. I have the entirety of Eye for the Engine on YouTube. Pretty sure it's on there anyway. Shapeways tend to squish landscapes, not to weed it, but I can manage. Crop it! 
cut out some of the needless background. Oh, you like the IP Engine books? Yes, I did I once upon a yonder. Oh, and there's me dropping something. It's a bit of brass wire. I don't know if it's come from this or from when I was doing the Craven. Either way, it might be important. Mayor's Brocasso has raised to speak to visitors. How, indeed, James, how very polite of them. Before we start soldering, remember, everyone, hydration is important. So, these are the bits we want. We need to move them all to the side. No, no hydration flux. Hydration flux is bad. We're going to get the soldering block out. And half the part, wasn't it? Covered in flux. Who would leave it in such a state? There we go, no more flux. Bit of super glue on there though. And we want the carbon fibre. The, 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 the the glass fibre pen so that we can polish everything that's going to take solder with it because shockingly this kit that is older than volume 3 of southern wagons has had done a fair bit of yellowing over its life I mean, look at the difference in that. I feel like doing that whole door just to make a point that, God, that looks like a completely different piece of brass now. <laughs> Sitting next to that, even you can see on camera the difference there. So we have our solder, which is Come on, give us some focus. 6040 lead solder, the best kind. We have our Fry Power Flow Flux. Ideal flux for lead free solder. It says that, but it works wonderfully with this leaded solder. We really should have that command, you're quite right. We have the famous Oak Hill pin. Be 
which we can use to apply the flux to the model. And then store in the lid. PPE because eyes are important. Indeed. We have a terrier problem here and he's unhappy. Terriers are never unhappy. Unless they're in boxes. And that's a very nice looking terrier you've got. So I'm not happy to hear that it's unhappy. That's rather warm. As if anyone's shocked by the fact that the soldering iron's hot. These tweezers I'm using now are ceramic, so do not transfer any heat look at that it's just like colouring in other than that first bit there where it's gone a bit thick. Just like colouring in. This one is, well, that's not acceptable. Why is it unhappy? I'm just trying to find the oil. Maybe try a bone. Yeah, try a bone. Terriers like bones. True fact. We're now going to apply some flux to the door and it was at this point I'm going to remember that I had stuff here for washing the flux off earlier and I got rid of it. Why well, I think there's a lack of oil thing goes a bit then stops dead. Well hopefully it's just a lack of oil. I just think it's a mechanical rather than electrical problem. All the questions must be asked. So now we're going to get a, as thin amount as we can of solder on here like we did on the end wall to get the door lined up where we want it behind the wall
and then we're going to heat up our brass again which will of course heat up the solder between the two parts melting it and joining our parts together at least that's the theory obviously you can see that didn't work and I'll be honest that's not the first time I've had that not work The whole point of the soldering block is it stops anything else. You know, the soldering block and the ceramic tweezers won't take away any heat. Which in theory makes things like this much easier. So I point out I only arrived with me yesterday. And let me guess, everything else works. It's just the terrier that's a problem. is of course when working from behind it's not the end of the world if we just need to add a tiny bit more solder which will for some reason encourage the rest of the solder to melt and give us the join that we're after Super glue over. So those parts are now very solidly together. frames that are exactly the same as the outer one. will go in place like so, which means that they will need a clean up and some solder putting on them. They look to be identical, it doesn't look like they've got a thick leg and a thin leg. Is to take the bone dry that in a bit like it would if binding and it's not, it's not good is it when they arrive with you like that but it wouldn't be the first model to arrive in such a condition and that be the only problem with it
Which version is it? Oh, I'm, I'm sure you approve of the version of it. Christopher sent me pictures of his wonderful te new terrier yesterday. And it really is quite exquisite. Isn't it, Christopher? And there's a link from chatbot. What one's that? That's the Patreon link for people that want to support the channel. I should really be holding it with these rather than with the solder because of course holding it down with the solder whilst soldering it probably isn't the wisest of ideas. Look at that, gotta buy some oil. Oh, even, even better. Things just get better. It's the um, South Eastern and Chatham one he's got anyway, James. Since he won't be able to answer for a bit. And it does look absolutely wonderful. The, the livery detail on it looks incredible. Won't be all that part. Engage, James. Engage. I approve of engage. I knew you would. I was impressed I could see it, honestly. Yes, Christopher here, despite my efforts, is an engager. I tried to make him see the light, but it didn't work. And there we have a piece that looks no different to before I put those window bits in. But they're there. And it's actually still rather warm, so... Oh, I'm going Christopher. <laughs> That's no way to respond, James. <laughs> You're not supposed to encourage these things. I always hated dealing with engage in the shop. 
scared to death I was going to break something. Yep. Engage is very engaging. One can get so much more layout in. Engage is very invisible. <laughs> my response to your N related pun. Now free mill on the other hand. You get the benefits, you get the extra layout space of Engage and the visibility of double O. I have operated a few free mill gauge layouts at shows and I really do love them. It is, an, it is an incredible gauge. If I hadn't have already been so heavily invested in 4mil the first time I played with 3mil, there is a very good chance that is what I would be modelling in. Yeah, well, I'm strong enough double O that I know. Exactly, Alex. 100 standard scale, bone or more manufacturer support, or indeed some manufacturer support. <laughs> yes, indeed. So, as before, we want to paint the solder on. It's amazing how far you can spread a tiny little bit of solder like we had there. It really will go much further than you'd ever expect. I mean, that is. Everywhere we're going to solder to, tinned with solder, just from a tiny little bit off the end there. That was no more than a millimetre off of the coil. Soldering goes further with flux. Sounds like an advertising slogan of the 20th century. <laughs> it does a bit, doesn't it? There's a lot of flux on there. It does need washing properly. You should always, always wash flux off of brass. Because it will go green and horrible. You can clean it up just fine once it's gone green. But it's better to not let it do that in the first place, don't you think? I 
and you can just wash that off with washing up liquid and water. Today I learned Voyagers do operate on the East Coast Main Line due to learn researching for TS scenarios. I had no idea where they operated and I've been on one, so there's that. I mean, admittedly, it was a very long time ago. That goes that side and I won't read them, he says. I know this has nothing to do with anything. Um, It has something to do with trains, therefore it is perfectly acceptable on this live stream. Also, since when did anything having to do with anything matter on this live stream? I return having purchased said oil. Excellent. You missed James praising you for resisting my efforts to making you go for a meal. He says your invisible trains are much better. Usually found on the western side of the country, the cross country operate over the East Coast Main Line from York to Edinburgh as part of the cross country part. I mean, operating cross-country as part of cross-country does make sense. And I do approve of things making sense. It has to happen occasionally. On the wrong side again. I'm going to want them in a second as we take the tiniest bit of solder off there that we can. Because we already know that tiny bit of solder will go all the way around this door. Even if we have to flatten the bumps out to do it. All the way round. British Railway Network making sense. No, it doesn't sound right. No, I know. It's weird, isn't it, Alex? But it's first time for everything. Thank you, Mr. Pence. I am a lifer. <laughs> And there we are, that is all the parts tinned. So now we need to get the door lined up. We want to keep this on this side of me. I will forget.
so we're just going to get this enough that it's stuck and then we'll work from the back again tell you what that wind is really really strong outside but I see the chatbot telling me that hydration is important despite living right by the main territory I've never been on a Voyager although from what I've heard that is a good thing yeah yeah you're not wrong although they seemed like luxury when I went on one because I had been on a vet earlier in the day As long as the wind is also not strong inside, you'll be fine, probably. Yeah, the, the, so, so far the house is holding up. Voyages are the most uncomfortable long distance trains on which I've ever travelled. Yeah, as I say, I, I don't remember it being a comfortable train, but I remember it not being the VEP that I'd been on that morning. And yes, that is how long ago it was that I was on a Voyager last. there we go that is very nearly this part also done one more part soldered I did go on a Pendolino one which wasn't too bad worst part of the journey was arriving at Euston Euston might well be one of the ugliest stations in the UK the LNWR would be appalled to see it in fact might well be the ugliest station I don't think I've ever been. There we go, now it's had a second to call. One nice end. Look, I can get two. Here's one I made earlier. Like, literally just before, you probably saw it. So ideally I'd now be washing them, but well, let's pretend. Dip it in the pot of warm soapy water. Scrub, 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 scrub. That's literally all you do. So it wants us to do something with the floor. Bend down small flange on the floor edges, ensuring the floor stays flat. Tin the outer face of the flange. Bend down. The draw beam ends. Right, let's move that out of the way. Good, stay away. <laughs> I, 
I will try. But Mr. Mole, that you're not missing anything. <laughs> Fair enough. When you look at other London terminal stations and those survived intact, it's shocking to see what they did to it. Fair enough. I haven't been there before they did it either to compare, so you know. I'll take your word on that as well. Let's clean up the ends. Good evening Heritage Railway Productions, how are you? I hope you are well. Anvil time. So, take the floor unit. Uh, uh, Bend down the small flanges on the floor edges, ensuring the floor stays flat. Tin the outer face of the flange, bend down the board, the draw beam ends. So it doesn't want us to bend down the middle bits, apparently. Even though they clearly do bend down, they've got the half etch line on them and everything. I am, thank you, hope you are good as well. I am indeed. So the terrors out of action, standard 5 MT is the right replacement, there's no other terrors around, right? No, just, just. Don't, don't make me ban you. <laughs> I already let you get away with Engage. 100% approval of where well is my favourite state of health. Indeed, James, it is a good state of health, isn't it? Tin the outer face of the flange. So we want to tin these bits and then bend down these bits? I think not. Do our bending first. And then tin them. Because it, you know, bending means a, and tinning means a change of tools. And why would I change tools to instantly change them back when working on the same part? Get some flux on these. It does want the whole thing. I'm, I'm going to bend the whole thing. And I'm going to tin the whole thing for that matter. Fulgentees are fine as long as they have one of the bigger tenders, ideally a 
the BR1F. I, I have no idea what BR tender classifications mean. Modern rubbish. I like standard 5MT, that's at 5T the only standards I can well stand. <laughs> Very good, Alex. I'm going to re tin them all now, uh, re flux them all. I'll just do one side at a time. Hold. And so we'll once again use a tiny bit of solder and do the whole thing. My other choice is the Duchess of William Scott. <laughs> just, just no. Uh, but going back in time now again, C class, C class is a good choice. The choice for sure. Yeah, I, I, I approve of C classes. Especially since, as the C-Class was a good loco for the South Eastern and Chatham, this brake van will at some point find its way behind a C-Class. Because of course it will. Can't think that's all that means or fit the window frame. And then the... I've got to find where I am. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a pen and I'm going to mark on here where I am. And every so often I'll get to a point where I'll just mark it again. Start body assembly by tacking the van end to the floor, locating slots. Keep the end square to the floor, lay the unit on its side and attach one side by tacking to the floor flange, maintaining edge alignment and a flat floor, turn on to its base, the base, and tack the top flange, slipping the other end. Right. First things first, it wants one of these attached. Now this is where my right angle bit of brass would have come in handy. But if 
I can use this, it will be fine. because it's time to start making the breakdown actually look like a breakdown. You know what I should have done here though, don't you? I should have polished the parts first. Because that's not holding. Always clean your parts before soldering. Always. Do me so much of a mess, Bash, and I should have been. Should have it known that one of the layouts that I'm playing as GWR LMS guys. Ooh, ooh. L LMS, fine. LMS is good. I've got no problem with the LMS, but the GWR. Ugh. Did our specialist go down and crab the source of Ivan Glebe Railway? You can indeed, as you said earlier on Discord. That was awesome news. Do you own a C-Class Gary? If so, what make? I do have a C-Class. It's from the Great British Locomotives magazine and has been motorised using an Airfix 4F chassis. It is tender dry. Painted in simplified Wainwright, although that will get redone with the full Wainwright eventually. I have done some test transfers for it. I've not actually got round to printing them and checking the sizes on them and everything yet. And there's a link to my Instagram polish the part. If you ever go down to Bell, definitely try and see Stepney again. You can go into Stepney's cab as well. Stepney, the fact that you can do that is just excellent if you ask me. Ah, where did, where did Streamlabs go? Come back Streamlabs. God, that was scary. Streamlabs completely disappeared off my screen. I thought the tweet like ended or I thought I'd done something and killed it. Will it eventually get to the Bluebell C class's priority? As it should be. As it should be. Never knew that magazine made C class. I just have the mal have mallard. Oh, I got all of them, and they have. Although a lot of the models are stuff I would never want to motorize or have as a model for any of my interests personally, they have. They all have a use as part fodder. Domes, whistles. Chimneys, it all gets stolen off and used on something at some point. But yes, I, I subscribed to it to get the cheap bodies for bashing into other stuff. Screen Labs, indeed. That was a scary moment. I have a Batman C class. See, I would like a Batman one, but I'd have to get the one they did in the livery properly, and the price of them is just, yeah. Well out of my league. I like I'm upset about they didn't open the cab two with the Adams radial. Yeah, well, I mean, you would think they would since they're not ever going to do anything else with it. 
Not like do any harm having the cab open on it. It's never going to run again. Saw it at the right place at the right time. Well, yeah, I wish I'd have had the money to do it when they were first released. Because, of course, they weren't so stupid when they were first released. Do not, under any circumstances, Hit your finger with the soldering iron. not something I approve of. I feel very lucky to have my Farish one. Yes, and your Farish one looks lovely. Glad I got my Batman one when they first came out. Well, I would still pay £200 for it. Yeah, see, I know it's worth the money. It's just having the money to throw at it that's the problem. Right, so it thinks I should work my way round. The instructions say I should lay it on its side. Put the side in place and tack this on. Burn my finger on a soldier and iron, never again. Indeed, it's not pleasant, is it? Yeah, so it says what I should do now is stick that on, tack it along the bottom, then attach the top flange and then the other end. So, we can polish this up, tin it, and get on with that. Night. Good work I'll say good night all. Okay, good night, Paderborn. Thank you for coming. It has been wonderful to have you here as always. En enjoy work. Don't don't do too much. And I shall speak to you on the discords. My friend got told that apparently E4 will never run again because of all the problems with it. Um I have heard of the E4 being a lot of work. I'd not heard it wasn't going to run again. But I don't know what's wrong with it. So Birch Grove is the E4, isn't it? The Birch Grove is indeed the E4. Now, time has seemingly flown this evening. I did not realise we were already at 10 to 11. So I must ask, what is everyone up to this evening? What projects are we working on? Please do tell me, you know I love to hear about them. Tin Arbor, which 
isn't being as friendly to the solder as it was. Sometimes get brass like this and find it very annoying. And that end was much better behaved. Cracked firebox handling and wheel tyres, that's not a lot, that's nothing the Bluebell can't deal with. They wouldn't even have to send anything out if that's all that's wrong with it. DCC fitting an engage class 47. Rather you than me, James. With stale eyes and light customization. Definitely rather you than me, James. Work for in a brake van. I approve of working on brake vans. Nothing at the minute, but probably do more scenery stuff on my layout. Ah, excellent. I approve of scenery stuff on layouts. So, whilst we're in a tinning mood, I'm actually going to polish up this bit and tin that as well. Not sure there's going to be enough solder here to do this, but there should be. But it can't hurt to use a bit more. Clearing the workbench, start finishing projects, this is very inspired by the LBSCR carriage books. Excellent. Good books, aren't they? Have you got volume two now as well then, Andy? As far as this from Steam Motor goes, those aren't hugely major issues. No, indeed, they are not. Chunking the BR stock off and bringing the older stuff on again using the C class. I approve of using the C class to rid the world of BR. The other week I found a video filmed around the 90s on Bluebell Line, certain areas and locos running on the line. Um, which one? They've had a few of the NRM's locos down. For example, don't pull too hard, there is, just under my light, a picture of Gladstone sat outside the old Sheffield Park sheds. That is straight, it just doesn't look it. Why do you visit dread of an engaged DCC action? I just... C -c because of the visibility and the space to do it and stuff like that, James. Fit the 47 is much easier than fit the engaged Terrier. I'm, I'm sure it is. I'm very sure it is. Fit the 47 is much easier than fit the engaged Terrier. Uh, approved of LBSCR carriage books. Volume 2 seems to be on the slow boat. Oh, that's a shame. But 
it's on the slow boat, but it is a very, very good book, and I'm sure you will enjoy it when it comes. Little cue on your own. Oh, excellent. Gladstone Run in preservation. Um, I mean, Gladstone's been preserved since 1927, and I'm pretty sure it has run in that time. But I don't believe it actually ran at the Bluebell. I believe it got pushed around. Might have run, but I don't think it did. I've moved those supports now. It's way too stretched out. And there's a link to the donations, should you want to donate to the live stream. As I have said several times, these things are not compulsory. I do this for fun. I am not in it for the money. However, people want there. There was some calls for an option to donate, so they exist, and the money you donate is all used to help run the stream. Okay, cool. Glad to see she visits some heritage lines. I, I don't know if she ever visited anywhere else. operate on this bit of brass now either. Maybe it's the solder rather than the brass. Although it cooperated on that bit just fine. How strange. So I have to help put the kids to bed to let see the progress. Okay Andy, thank you for coming. Has been great to have you here. I shall look forward to speaking again soon. Fairfield is now condemned to museum pre group locos of Rome preservation pretty much all before our time. Indeed. coming off that. I do not approve of the end coming off that. Uh, some may not even run again depending on its condition. Indeed, there is plenty of locos that will not run again. And a few that will that probably shouldn't. Goffman, <coughs> sorry what? Let me just refill the hydration vessel. Anything owned by the NRM will never run again unless they palm them off on other groups who care, then they might. Well, as I say, there, 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 there's some that will but shouldn't. Hydration is important. Right then. So we want this. On here. And we want the bottom of it to line up with this flange. Now I think 
think it's going to be easier to line this end up first and tack that and then work our way along. Looking forward to seeing two friends back at Angle on now they've been liberated. Indeed. Won't it be great to see? Now, did that work? It looks like it did. Yes. So with that end tapped in place, we can get this end lined up. And also tacked in place, that's going to get really hot. But hopefully it's tapped and that was worth it. It is, hurrah. few more bits along the bottom stuck whilst trying not to get too much round onto the side because we will have to file that all off at a later date. Imagine being a tea for in the Adams radio at the blue there. I think my imagination is capable of that. Yes, I do believe I could imagine that. The problem is, if something like that were to happen at the blue bell, they'd probably do something stupid like insist it was all in BR livery. Does nothing for me. I'm one of the odd people who doesn't really like the Adams radials. Yeah, it, it, I, I understand people that don't like them, but I do quite like them. Wonder what double O works from Tuesday next year. Something expensive and rough looking. If <laughs> you're there, yeah, I, I agree with Alex and Christopher. Something expensive and rough looking, not produced by an RPR manufacturer and better than most people could build from a kit. Still, for the price, I'd say it's much better finish. Yeah. I bet whilst you couldn't build one from a kit for the price, you could pay someone else to build a kit for the price. Good evening, Max. Long time no see. How are you? I hope you are well. Never seen the Adams Radio in person. Seen plenty of double O gauge versions of them. I, I have seen the Adams Radio in person. It's Adamsy and radially. I preferred it when it was green to its current livery. I've just remembered I've not actually tapped the sides of that on yet, have I? I should do that. Got 
that down in front of the camera, not on it. Not plus two. <laughs> I never even noticed the typo until you pointed it out. One really couldn't. Kit build will cost at least six hundred pounds, not including the kit. Good kit build will cost grand without the kit. Well, I know people that build kits for less than that that are full time kit builders. Buffalo works models cost three hundred fifty. I don't think that's it's rubbish. I've never had a kit build quote anywhere near that much. No, not I, I've had. Many, men, I, I know many people that build kits for less than 350 quid. Where'd you get your kit build quotes? <laughs> what was loads of a thing that can't remember? Suit me and then, all right. I know it took a long break from mental health back on Twitter, but my old account. I oh, no longer in existence. Ah, fair enough. Well, welcome back. I am sorry to hear you had issues with mental health and hope everything is all better now. is stuck. Kit building for less than 300 and things. Yeah, yeah. Even better if you can find someone that does it on a live stream for you because then they charge less whilst they're streaming because you're giving them content. And you've got a good record of their, they've actually worked the hours they claim. It is good. CR Phillips now retired. He's the most definitely professional builder. I suppose we've tested quite a bit. 480 pounds. He's kit building LRM MR240. And there we go. So, can I mention a few Meccano purchases? Um, it, it depends, Max. If there's conversations going on, let the conversations go on. He also did a repaint on the Hornby King Arthur for me once, about £90. To finish from fast and superior to anything double A works have done. Yeah. It was easier to DCC as well. Have you ever been to Shield and LRM? I have not. I want to do the bottom of this as well, don't I? See, I do remember these things.
Tweet me about it later. Yep, that's cool. Tweet me about it later. That is not a problem. And the bot says, remember kids, hydration is important. Me neither, glad it's not just me. Not impressed with that blow work, never will be. Say no more about the subject. See, like I say, Alex, I bet none of these people you've had quoted for you have purposely made it hard to fit DCC because they don't believe in it. Because that's a business practice I'll never understand. Oh no, don't tell me the pin was in there. Oops. Um, that's gone somewhere. I need that in a second as well. I sent my pin on a flying trip. Absolutely no idea where it landed. Unless I actually left it somewhere completely different, but I don't think I have. That was silly. 10 minutes I will buy one bad work models, send one to Jenny Kirk for her review. Why not? <laughs> I'm sure she'll review it. Any new products Gary Light and V built or had successfully finished on your side? Loads of them, Max. You'll be glad to know I've kept a video record of them all. I'm trying to find something I can use instead of my pin now that I've thrown that somewhere. Oh, that was it for a second. It was not. I've got a bit of brass up here, that'll do. Hope the pin enjoyed its trip. I mean, it was rather unexpected. I put the soldering iron in its cradle, and the cradle landed on the moved itself onto the lid of, of as I was because I'd just done the tip cleaner, which moves the cradle a bit. It landed on the lid of the flux pot where the pin was sitting. Three favourite King Arthur logos, probably three more, more than three, but still X. So I've been offline for a few months. I don't know what you've been up to. Don't worry though, there's, there's a video record of it all, Max, a lot. DC fitting is successful, excellent. Wind is windy, indeed it is. As much as we said for the King Arthur one, oh, it's pretty windy here, DJ and stuff. It's, but it's snow right now, we've not got any snow here yet, thankfully. Snow all it once, all it wants once the inevitable close the school order comes in. But until then, you can go away. I'm going to be sticking with DC as much as possible. My trouble seems to start with DCC. Fair enough. Whatever works for you is best. Snow here or there, windy. My aunt in Canada has reported snow recently too. Mm. 
I say, you can stay away from here at least until the order to close the schools comes in. And the order will come. Ha ha, they aren't going to close the schools again. Yeah, they aren't going to lock down either, according to them, Alex. Give it time. I'm not going to say anything else, I might start ranting. is not wanting to stick for some reason. That is quite strange. My data that is starting to take shape. It is, isn't it? Does it look anything like your one yet? That's really not wanting to stick. How strange. We're going on to tinned brass. It's not like I'm sticking, trying to stick to untreated metal. It's trying to stick to solder. What was that? That was not my pin. That is a shame. Need more PO wagons, I have decided. I approve of PO wagons. Bye guys, need to go now. Stay safe, nice video. Okay, thank you for coming, J94, and see you next time. But yes, actually, good point. Need to spray that. Be right back. <laughs> Oh, there we go. How very strange that he didn't want to stick. And that I would then immediately break it after it does. Okay, no one's surprised by that second bit. But still. There we go, that's stuck. Because I swear how nice. No, it hasn't. Why are you not sticking to solder? Has anyone else ever experienced this where solder will not stick to pre-tinned metal because I've certainly never had this before where I'm having problems with met with solder to solder
Told you to throw the bugs and nukes me. I've only seen it with a lead free solder and an iron too cold. Well, this iron is certainly not too cold. Unless the heating element in it has died, which it doesn't feel like it has. And the it is it has got a thermometer on the heating element that tells me it's at 416 degrees. So I get the impression it's not too cold. But we are finally stuck now. Thankfully we have three sides. All my years of never soldering, I can honestly say no, I've never seen such a problem. See? Even with all your experience, Alex, no one, even you've not had the problem. There's way more solder than I'd like in there, but at least it's on. And so now, of course, we just have the fourth side to get on. lined up nicer with this side. We haven't tinned this yet though, we want to do that. to go upwards straight away this time I also advise not breaking these no matter how small a chip it seems it just completely destroys the ability of this bit to stay in and so it pops out with any pressure on the end which is kind of defeats the object This is not as good for spreading solder as the pin. I must find the pin immediately after street. Oh, I would actually look for it properly now. But I want to get on. That a great prime breakdown now. Excellent. Excellent. I approve of primed brake vans. And look at that, spreading absolutely beautifully now. So I can be quite sure that our problem wasn't temperature related. Because clearly this is not having a problem with temperature.
there's a link to the Discord for those that want to join the Discord. Okeelmodelrailway.co.uk slash Discord. I know that one because it's really easy to remember, namely. Not like I actually know my own links or anything. So let's get this side tapped on. Wrapping around the camera. Silly soldering iron. Simple test. Put some of your blood on a petri dish dipped the soldering iron in it. I mean, I don't have a petri dish. And my blood is rare and hard to come by. Don't you know? It doesn't just come out at the slightest thing. Oh, oh wait, hang on. Sorry, I've got my blood confused. Yes, yes it does. Right then, there we are. that angle there's light coming that I can see That's that side definitely held on. It sounds like you're avoiding the tax thing. <laughs> Me? No, ne never. No. Don't know what you're on about, Alex. And there we are, we have a brake van. Not bad for a single night's work. Are we two and a half hours in? I'm quite impressed at that. Got the end class out now. Excellent. The auto brake van is looking increasingly brake van y. It is, isn't it? And look, there we go. It's got a roof. It's a brake van. Doesn't need anything else. Let's get my pen and put another mark on here so that I'm not reading halfway up the sheet again because it is just one big wall of text, this. 
Detach the underframe tray. So we're putting the body to the side for now. Detach the underframe tray. Remove the brake shoe unit. For the, for the lower cell bar flange, then bend down the cell bars. Okay. Project under the body where it should just clip into place. Remove any projecting tabs on the body assembly which foul. Prepare cell bar overlay. Blah 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 blah. Right then, let's pop that up there. I may have got life and the thing mixed up. No, it doesn't seem that way at all, Alex. It doesn't seem that way at all. Well, so looking good. Thank you both. assembly hopefully there's lots of those about ah it's two, two folds all right then so if I do the last cell bar flash then bend down the soul bars. It doesn't say anything about bending this flan this bit out on the edge. So we're just going to bend these down for now. I should have um, filed that lot first, shouldn't I? as well I can see it check under the body where it should just clip in place it does it very much does just clip in place. I'm impressed. Remove any projecting tabs on the body assembly, which foul prepare cell bar overlay. Impress the rivet detail on the raised pad. Tin the rear of cell bar, stick to the tray. Bend down the stay part. Right, so those don't get bent down until the soul bar is on. There we go. I was right. I approve of just clipping in place. Yes, so do I. I am very impressed at that. So next stage is to get the soul bars on. So we're going to polish these up and tin these first. We'll do one at a time. Bizarre for kits doing what they're supposed to do. Actually a rare thing in the modern railway world. It is, isn't it? Much rarer than it should be.
I say I was extremely impressed by that. I would like to repeat my point that I'm pretty sure it was not the iron giving us hassle on that, on that part. Joy of joys there, fix the show artwork for new tool, Cromwell tank, and clumsy version of farmer's decals. I'm a happy boy. Excellent. I'm glad to hear you are a happy boy those bits out from under there they don't want to be under there they want to be over there Good evening, Thomas. How are you this evening? I hope you are well. Of course, when I say happy, it's relative. I know what you mean. Shush. I know how Alex's language works. I've had to move houses, but my dad's now back home. Well, that was a very fast house move. I must say, mine normally take days. Welcome back. <laughs> Someone needs to. <laughs> oh, you forget, Alex. I know you too well. Well, cheers. How the devil are you, sir? I am well, thank you. I certainly don't. No, that's alright, Alex, because, you know, I know you better than you at times, let's be honest. These are some very interesting shaped sidebars. They have gaps in them and everything. They're exactly the right height though, which is nice. Well, it appears they are anyway. You know what appearances are like. I'm just trying to work out how they fold before I cut them out. Because otherwise there'll be countless issues.
right, it's still attached in the middle there. Oh, and there's a link to the Facebook page, which still has almost no likes on it. So it doesn't get much attention. Right, that looks like they fold very strangely. I, of course, want to get this exactly right. Must be quite tired before the bot was telling you to set up the page for a second. <laughs> Brilliant. No, no. The only thing the bot tells me to do is to hydrate because hydration is important. Let's get all our bits on here filed down. Mugs, oh yes. Got the channel logo on the other side. This is Mugs. <laughs> the hydration vessel for its size. The most important thing you will pick up all day. <laughs> No, I need, I, I need more time to come up with a Tugs parody about hydration. The mug boat for its size is the most useful drinking vessel afloat. <laughs> there we go. Alex is better than me for a Tugs cover. Most of my impromptu on stream covers are about copyright infringement. The star mugs are behind oh, the desks of workbenches that make up the modeling area. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly though, it's the Oak Hill model railway mugs that are the power behind the desks and workbenches that make up the modelling area. Let's not pretend there's any better brands out there. Exclamation mark merch in the chat everyone. And then go buy yourself a mug. There are many of my slogans on there. Obviously hydration is important. It's the best one. and It's the only real option. It's the only one you should get. Are there rivals with egg cups? Well, they, they must be. I can't imagine who else the rivals in this mugs show would be. I'm still not sure how these fold, you know. So they go this way on here. And I am just wondering if these just fold. No, there's definitely a 90 degree. There's two folds here. This must fold through 90 and then these through 90 again on top of that.
And there's a bit I forgot to file. There we go. for a year indeed wonderful to see thank you christopher watch master at work i thought you were watching me how rude how very rude snapped off but that's all right the good thing about brass is you can solder it back on that is honestly though the only way I can see how this kit folds uh, this solvar folds no, I it's got the tea cups. <laughs> oh, excellent. And then that goes there. And then the bottom bit folds up to meet it afterwards. Yes, I think we've got that right. I think we've got it worked out, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, now that I know what I'm doing, I probably won't fold the other one until after it's on, but I'd have never worked that out if I didn't. Oh, Evan self depreciate. Oh, I've Nicky, we've got the best stream on YouTube doing SCR breakdown deals on SCR stuff. Running on my own out. All is defo well. So you've got someone else's stream on as well as this one. That's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing, Christopher. But I do approve of the SECR stuff running on your layouts. Sticking to my fingers. How rude having someone else's stream on. Exactly, Thomas. Exactly. Sure, this is product from Micro Mark or Scale Precision. Never seen a mini anvil before. But, but I have no idea where my mini anvil comes from, but I've never heard of those companies you mention. It's strange, but despite being biased on the MR brake van, I don't get MR vibes from it. I legit can only think of an SCCR brake. How strange. Hmm. Apparently my soldering iron Oh, it's not showing up on camera. Most of this solder, 
after the Soldier and I am running along it, is the same colour as the red primer that is sprayed on here. No, I don't understand it either. Mine is nearly dry, ready for wheels. Excellent. I approve of nearly dry and ready for wheels. Even if you are cheating with a 3D print. Yeah, it's even worked to do that now, whereas it wouldn't work doing that on the doors earlier. Can brass oxidise? Um, I assume so. I'll get my kit. Yeah, kit brass can oxidise. Yes, I'll get my kit built one day. I hope whoever does it, it doesn't charge them the upwards of a thousand pounds. Yeah, I hope they don't as well. Bit steep that. But are you trying to say, Alex, that by watching me so far tonight for the last few hours, you've put me off? Or I've put you off building it yourself? Three D printing isn't cheap per se, it's still more dreams for mostly digitally. Oh I'm well aware of that, Thomas. It was a joke. This is 3D printed. So I'm well aware of 3D printing still being modelling. Who said 3D printing is cheating? I did as a joke. I didn't mean it when I said it. Never intention of me building it, I'm never soldering, you know. Yeah, yes, I do know that. Must have missed you saying that. I, I said it to Christopher when, when he was mentioned about his one of these being ready for wheels because he's got a 3D print of it in Engage. That was a joke. Good, as long as you do. But yes, I know there was never actually any intention of you building it, Alex. It's weird, of course, because you're one of them, is of course the one that I intended on turning into the single veranda version once upon a time. It just took a very long way round to get to you. Indeed, so I was putting the birdcage on the track. Yeah. Fair enough. So, it, 
the clock tells me we have like three minutes left. I'd best hurry up with this soul bar, eh? And the smash the like button from the bot kind of confirms that. So remember everyone, if you haven't already, do smash that like button. I'd like to get a kit that seems van to be honest, I'm much more interesting. They are very interesting kicks. They are very interesting bands. Yes. And so one day I intend on having both types. But it seems to me to make sense to do this one as the one it's intended if I plan on using a different method to make the other one. And there we go, that, that soul bar stuck on. So now we want to bend this out. I've got loads of four wheel MR single brand brake van MR and do a kit of six wheel ones. So I'll get one of them one day as well. Excellent. As you should. I know you've got a four wheel single veranda Midland one. Someone might have pointed it out to you on eBay once upon a time. I'm not going to try and rush to get those bits bent up, it can stay as it is. Because there we have, just as we cross over midnight, a brake van. <laughs> I forgot. Typical Alex. So yes, there we are. One brake van that has, I'm going to be honest, progressed a lot further than I thought it would. I am very impressed with what we've got done tonight. I'm really hoping that it's going to focus a bit better than what I'm seeing. That looks in focus to me now, when my hand came in, ironically. But yeah, I'm very impressed with that for a three hours work. So yeah. Thank you for watching everyone. Smashing great progress, I really enjoyed it. Thank you Alex, thank you Thomas, thank you Christopher. I have had a great time. I hope you have too. This stream's flown by compared to the recent ones as far as I'm concerned. But yes, I've had a great time. I hope you have. And I look forward to us doing this again next week. I have plans for a shorter video that doesn't need loads of editing like the one I've been trying to get out this Tuesday. So there should be a Tuesday video this week. I said that last week. I said there will last week. So, you know, don't hold me to it. Obviously, there'll be a review of this stream on Thursday. And then we'll be back to continue with the break van next Sunday 
However, all that's left for me to say is thank you for coming. I have been Gary. This has been Let's Build. You've been absolutely awesome. Good night.